Are you looking to build a PC in 2020 that can game and stream? Then you, my friend, have arrived. Hey, Danny here with DTC. I recently outlined what kind of components I would use for a gaming and streaming PC in 2020 coming in under $800. If you want to check out that video, I'll link it up here so you can see part one of this episode. This video is all about how the PC turned out and how well it performs, which is what I'm sure most of you care about anyways, so let's check it out.
This computer turned out fantastic. I'm really happy with how it looks, all the parts fit really well together, and it handles 1080p gaming and streaming perfectly fine. Actually, it handles 1440p gaming and streaming perfectly fine. Let's take a look at some of these benchmarks. All these games were tested on high settings and I ran them at 1080p and 1440p and you can see by the chart I ran them while streaming and without streaming and I was really impressed with the frame rate changes between streaming and not streaming and then 1080p and 1440p. You can see the scaling pretty well here. All these games were played and captured. All the footage you're seeing is right from this system, so this can give you a really good representation of exactly what it would look like if you're trying to record and upload your footage to YouTube or stream and play it to, to Twitch or YouTube or Facebook gaming. If you're getting value out of this, hit subscribe down below and come back later for more PC related content. I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough of what streaming softwares I tried out for this build and what worked the best for me. The three major streaming softwares you can get are NVIDIA's GeForce Experience, which is like a screen capture. Um, if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, it automatically comes with this software. Uh, you download it when you download GeForce Experience to get all your drivers and everything like that. Or the other two are made by OBS. They do the OBS uh, Streamlabs and the OBS Studio. Those two are a little bit more complicated to use, which is why I would recommend GeForce Experience. Okay, now you have all the information and everything. You saw what it can do. You saw the build and all that. Let's talk about the highlights that I really enjoyed about this build. So my favorite things about the, the build was that the case has great airflow and it comes in at a fantastic price point. I mean, 60 bucks, it comes with the two RGB fans in the front and this whole front section is mesh. So, I mean, you've got really good airflow coming through. You can always add top fans or rear exhaust fans if you wanted to. The Ryzen 3600 is one of the newest chips from AMD. I really liked building with it. It didn't necessarily get hot. Um, I just threw the cooler on here for AMD for aesthetic purposes. I wanted that little RGB bling, you know. But it handles work center tasks. It handles gaming perfectly fine. This is like the best chip, as I said in the last video, for budget and performance. Because I mean, it's under $200 and it's got six cores, 12 threads. It, it does really well for anything that you're gonna wanna do today. And then finally, the GTX 1660 Super. A lot of PC enthusiasts have this elitist mindset that you can't get low-end cards because you've got to get the 2080s and the 2080 Ti's, even the 2070s. They have this like idea in their heads that it cannot perform if it's not a high-end card. That's simply not true. This proves it right here. I had my son test all these games for me on this computer while streaming and everything, and I think the numbers speak for themselves. I mean, if you look at the 1080p performance, you're at or over 100 FPS in pretty much every game. Uh, I had a little weird hiccup for Call of Duty. Um, I actually got better performance while streaming than I did while not streaming. That may be the map renderings. I mean, I didn't play the exact same 
map every time. So it may have more shading, it may have more rasterization that needs to happen on the map that I played, but that's within the margin of error. 1080p, this thing can game and stream all day long. And like I said, I keep saying, it comes in under 800 bucks. I mean, it looks great and it performs great. And then if you don't wanna be streaming, and you just want a game, your 1440p performance is more than what most people's 60 hertz monitors can handle anyway. This card from Asus proves that budget cards can perform and still be good priced. If you stayed to the end of the video, thanks so much. I really enjoy putting together this budget streaming and gaming PC. I say budget because it, it was under $800. That's really the best price you can get for these components and then give yourself an upgrade path later. This has the B550 motherboard, it's got an NVMe SSD, and it's got a fairly powerful power supply. This is the, the best choice because all you, can, all you have to do is upgrade processor, graphics card, maybe give yourself some more RAM, and you're into the high-end PC components. I mean, it runs 2K gaming. That's impressive. If you like the video, don't forget to smash that like button. Once again, I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel, and I'll see you all in the next one.